ahead with the resonance up a little bit. And we're getting a variation of effect as far as the envelope is concerned across the keyboard because right now um, the keyboard effect is happening. Um, so the basses sound more rich and dark and the high end sounds sweeter. But. Yes, after you've watched 20 minutes of the oscillator without a filter, here is finally the filter sound. And I don't know if you can hear it, you may not care, that is obviously a Moog variety filter. That's nothing like the filter I had in my ARP Axe or ARP Avatar, which sounded fine, but not like this. Um, I'm a fan of the saw going through this filter, so you'll excuse me for a second if I make everything saw. <laughs> And actually, I think the oscillators sound pretty great too. These oscillators, which apparently aren't as good as the first oscillators ever put in our 2600s, but they sound much better than oscillators I've heard in more modern synthesizers. Um, so while they may not be as great as they once were, um, Phil Scirocco, they're still awesome. And, um, and they also are richer oscillators uh, than other oscillators of the time. So I'm quite fond of them, even if they are not as good as the oscillators that were in the first ARP 2600s, which people rarely even hear. Anyway, back to this great filter. So that's the awesome uh, envelope effect. Okay. Now on to what I think is the most exciting aspect of the ARP 2600, but also of the ARP 2600's filter. Um, it has the normal VCO2 sine wave input in the filter. Um, it has a dedicated, well it's not dedicated, it has this slider basically set up to modulate the filter with an oscillator, which is possible in other synths, but it wasn't, it's never been like such a focus as it is here. And the out, the benefits are insane. They're, they're wonderful. Um, let's have a listen to what happens. Well, that's not very exciting, is it? <laughs> getting is a sine wave from oscillator 2 that is modulating uh, at audio frequency the voltage controlled filter which leads to as you can hear it doesn't lead to a bizarre effect as you might expect it leads to a richening a gritifying a, uh, a texturing that is really really cool <laughs> And also there's modulation in it, you can hear is occurring. Okay, here is it gone. And here it is back. So it's really a timbral effect um, when set in this basic setting, 
that adds a huge amount of richness and foam. It adds foam is what it does. And that is a wonderful effect to have. And also, you know, you can also change it to get varying effects by messing with the frequency of um, oscillator 2. <laughs> I'm a lot of this effect that I'm getting is born of the fact that I still have the envelope affecting the sound, which adds something to it. Um, but let's also not forget that the real function of this was intended to be as a standard modulation source. So let's switch oscillator two into low frequency mode. And you get the really standard LFO effect, which is why I think they put it on there, but still, I mean... And then, you know, if that's not what you're looking for, you also could, you know, plug in the saw. Or triangle or the square wave, which you can vary with pulse width. So that's cool. Um, and that's, you know, a very standard use of a low frequency oscillator. But that to me is not nearly so cool as when, when you're using the audio oscillator in Oscillator 2 to make the tone of the filter richer. It's really cool. Um, you can also do things like uh, pulse width modulation while it's in low frequency mode so that you get a varied pulse width which makes for some nice effects. Um, also if like you wanted an inverted saw we will get into the voltage processors but I'll show you the, how you would get an inverted saw at this point. sound like this. So, um, basically you can use oscillator 2 to modulate, well, and you can use any of these in low frequency mode or even high frequency mode. I mean, if you wanted to use the dedicated... Aspect going on the filter, and then you wanted one of the other oscillators to do it as well. And then we will get into the real fun is when you turn up the resonance and use an audio oscillator to modify, modulate the filter. doing I'm just altering the frequency of uh, oscillator 2 as it modulates the um, filter with the resonance really high up and that's all I'm doing and of course you can set it up so that various functions modulate that too which is exciting but I'm just giving you a demonstration of it <laughs> So basically, that is a quick overview of the great 
sound and functionality of the ARP 2600 filter.